Hey guys, I just want to come on here and talk about uh, some things that have been on my heart lately, uh, the past couple days, you know. I want to talk about uh, hell and annihilationism, because I've known about this thing for a long time that's been out. This thing, there, there's this teaching going around in the body that when people go into the lake of fire, they're basically going to be annihilated. They're going to cease to exist. And I've studied and I've heard different arguments about it, but... You know, the scriptures are very clear when we look at them. Uh, there's certain scriptures that you can take. You don't have to take very many of them to kind of refute that um, evolution, that the uh, annihilation, annihilationism point of view. And the scripture about uh, Lazarus and the rich man, when the rich man was in hell, lifted up his eyes to heaven, uh, or he was in hell, and he basically lifted up his eyes to Abraham, which was in Abraham's bosom, and 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 he was burning in torment and saying, I'm burning in this torment. And Jesus mentioned this parable. And please send uh, Lazarus to dip his hand into some water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And, you know, the water was denied to him, basically. And, and the story went on that he was just burning there in the hell. And Jesus never told at one time that the fire being put out and he would cease to exist. You don't see that. And Daniel... Uh, it says that some there will be two resurrections, one of the just and one of the unjust. The righteous will go into everlasting, uh, everlasting life, and, the, uh, and the, the wicked into everlasting condemnation and contempt, everlasting, you know, condemnation and, and contempt of the Lord. And so, I would challenge the annihilation of some people that to look at this point of view. Uh, he Jesus Jesus said uh, also repeated that thing everlasting he said he told what i was talking about in daniel and he said it will be everlasting condemnation so you can't have that if somebody's going to cease to exist at a point of view a uh, point of time you know you can't have that annihilationism thing and jesus talked about where their worm doesn't die and the fire is not quenched and you know worms when they eat a person's body in the ground, they die as, as soon as that body is rotted away and it's gone. They, they they will die. He says where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And fire, fire doesn't burn just forever over nothing. Something has to be in that fire. And I, and, and I have a problem with the, these teachings and stuff because, you know, Satan, Satan is going into the fire pit of hell, guys. He's, his time is up. This is the end of the age, and he's trying to take as many souls down as possible. And, you know, annihilationism, I would say also, it's so close to atheism, because atheism, they say they're going to go into the ground and rot, cease to exist, basically. And so when, when they hear this annihilationism point of view, they're like, bring it on. If I have to go into fire, I'll cease to exist eventually. And God is not going to do that. He's far too just of a God to let people escape like that. He's not going to let them escape. And Jesus has talked about me many times. He showed me hell and many times. See, I've n I have not been indoctrinated with all these Bible studies and all these things to try to pervert the Holy Spirit in me. Because I've, I've been with Jesus and I've walked with him. And he, he's, he's taken me through hell and showed me I've seen hell so many times. And I had demons in my head for 16, 17 years, guys. So I know how they are. I know how... I know I have a sense of eternity and th they would say things like come die with me in a place of darkness. I would hear voices in my head when I was sleeping and die with me. You stay here forever with me. They they know it's forever and they, they want to make you think you guys think that you're just going to cease to exist and go in the fire. If you miss heaven, you get an escape. But no, you're not going to get to escape. Your souls or your spirits, I should say, are made out of the same uh uh, materials God's spirit is and that's why even if going into the fire you're not going to die and, and Mary Kate Baxter she was taken to hell by Jesus while awake not asleep for 30 days and nights and she saw people in a valley of hell uh, burning 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 saying let us die let us die let us die she saw people there thousands of years and I weep for you people that believe that that this judgment is you know you're going to cease to exist the people that go there because that is totally it perverts god's justice that a man like hitler that punished so many people and everything he's just going to get uh uh you know he's in hell right now and people like i said guys you got to stop believing what what people tell you on uh 
even YouTube, and don't even go by what I say. I want you guys to get your own experiences from Jesus. And if you're a Christian and you can't get Jesus to appear to you, it must be, I, I'm, I'm not saying this on a, a biased point of view or in pride, but there's there might be something seriously wrong. You might need to check out your salvation walk. Because the very day I repented, gave up all my sins to Jesus, immediately he started appearing to me in dream and vision. And he told me he would appear to the, pe the other people also if they would truly forsake their sins, if they would let him go and follow him. But many of these people, they're fought, hanging on to parts of the world and they're wanting to have Jesus. Like I mentioned from this makeup testimony, you know, a, a family member of mine said she doesn't believe that. And I do respectfully understand but at the same time, I'm, I'm trying to tell her there are people that have died and they've went to hell for this. Uh, a woman died in the hospital and she saw she was burning in flames and for, for makeup and everything. She saw women burning in fl flames with earrings and stuff. And I, I grieved the whole night yesterday, the, the entire night for a family member who I found out she didn't you believe that was a sin. Because I know that. From what Jesus told me, and I believe Jesus, nobody's name is in the book of life who is wearing earring attachments and uh, jewelry and necklaces and makeup. None, they're not in the book of life, and that bothers me. That that troubles me. I don't say these things to judge anybody. I'm heartbroken at that. And I pretty much kind of wept for her the entire night because I, I really love this person, and I think highly of her. And she and I, on a lot of things, are very about holiness and obedience we agree on those things but i've been i'm trying i'm trying so much to to put this into perspective for you guys that that like i said earlier hell is going to be forever there's no getting out of it jesus told of the rich man cast uh into hell i was asking abraham for water and he was uh saying send you know somebody to my family tell them not to come to this place of torment he had a sense that it was forever it was never it was never ending jesus told me the people that go into hell and that it'll be they'll be there forever and i believe him i'm a prophet of god and the bible says believe in the prophets of the lord and prosper and i'm not saying you believe every voice but if you want to know guys who are the false prophets who are the true prophets um look at the bible the bible says the false prophets say all told people sweet things they wanted to hear they prophesied lies and deceits they told them you go back to those prophets of old they were talking uh tell to the people of god and telling them there's going to be judgment if they don't repent and they called them basically heretics and they uh, jeremiah and all those people and they threw them in prisons and they killed a lot of them they were only recognized prophets is like years later after their books were written but they were rejected in their generation all the way up until they died and a lot of those writings in the old testament talk about the, uh israel having accursed things in their homes and it allowed the armies of they couldn't stand against their enemies until they removed the accursed thing and there was judgment on them and he told god would tell them to strip themselves of their earrings and, and the stuff that they were they were wearing strip themselves of those things so he'll know what to do with them but they strip themselves of all those adornments and again guys there, there are people that say i believe in the book of enoch and and their women and enoch talks about demons teaching uh fallen angels teaching people women how to paint their eyes and everything and, and it's, it's it was a sin to god and uh the old people of the old testament they had those writings and so they didn't need to repeat them but god has given us for you who believe uh that this is not a sin he's given you so many people that are coming back from the dead and telling you about this makeup thing to get it out of your life because satan and some of these testimonies he bragged he said i have all the women you know in the church no, no women will ever he bragged no women will get into heaven he bragged that there's very few getting into heaven that are willing to break off from the world jesus said in his word if a person doesn't forsake all that he has he cannot be my disciple that's what jesus said and guys i had to forsake everything that jesus called me to uh called me to give up when he puts his finger on you uh on something in your life he says this has got to go it's got to go and if it doesn't that means you're no longer going forward now you're frozen and your walk 
you won't get to heaven if you're frozen. You have to keep walking. I told you guys before that the Christian life, it's it's a progressive life. I, and somebody said once, uh, uh, the road to heaven is narrow narrow and narrower as the, as the uh, days go ahead. You know, so it gets smaller and smaller. You know, narrow and more narrow. And and it grieves me because I'm trying to bring people up to this mountain, this high place where God's wanting to do. If they would get a, rid of their their uh, attachments to the world, if they'd get rid of it, God would. They would see so much mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit, like I'm I'm seeing. And I want the, you guys to drink of the river. I don't want to squander what God has given me to myself. I want to give it. But I'm telling you, it's cost me to. I've had to go hard on my knees, and I've had to forsake a lot of stuff for the Lord. But I'm telling you guys, those attachments, uh, women, those attachments, those earrings and those jewelry and those things, they'll keep you from the gate of heaven. They'll keep you from that. And I don't want that to happen to you. I heard a gospel singer who was rejected. Uh, Jesus showed them her judgment and she went to the gate of heaven and she was excited. This person standing by the gate and watching. And he said, demons accused them, said, you can't get in because there's a uh, evil, there's attachment to the world, uh, there's attachment to earring, you were wearing earring, you were dyeing your hair, uh, and stuff, and these things were, uh, attached to demons and stuff, so when you're putting on those cursed objects, you're getting demons of lust that come into you, and, and I don't know you guys, if you've ever seen, you see women when they look beautiful, and it's almost like their eyes are, like, crystallized beautiful when they're wearing this makeup, that's not their own beauty, there, there was a person that, uh, said that Jesus showed them that that's water demonic water spirits and marine spirits of Satan going in and possessing those people who wear makeup they literally possess them and they give them artificial beauty in exchange women who are wearing these things they're taking away your natural beauty so you wonder why you have you might have skin problems after wearing this makeup you wonder why eyelashes are peeling off and your hair is getting messed up is because Satan his demons are allowed to legally destroy, Jesus said, your bodies. But when you're trading your your natural beauty for artificial beauty, you're getting demons beauty for all the time you wear this makeup. But underneath it all, he's destroying your skin. He's destroying everything. And he even said that there was judgment around people that, and like hair dyes and things, women, and, and getting uh, cancer of the head. And my sister, my twin sister, used to dye her hair like crazy. And she got a big tumor. And I prayed that God did a miracle when he removed it. But there's judgment against these things, guys. And God doesn't want a worldly bride. He's not coming back for a worldly bride. The women in heaven, guys, I saw them. They're holy. They're pure. They're separate. They're not wearing all those attachments. Those don't exist in heaven. And you guys that are wearing these big mohawks and all these... Uh, crazy hair and 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 stuff like that uh that's not going into heaven uh there's hell testimonies of uh, people in hell for wearing those hairdos those demons have those hairdos and they brought those hairstyles to earth to teach people this stuff and we've got to be holy we've got to come out of the world we've got to come out of our worldliness guys because it's going to separate us from from heaven it's going to separate us from jesus and if you take away these things guys you're going to see the outpouring of the holy spirit but right now if you're wearing these things you're blocking god you're blocking me says the lord i want to bless you you've prayed to me many things i want to bless you but you need to remove these things from your life so you can untie my hands and, and make a way and when i try to convict you of these sins you put a wall up against me and you build a big wall against me for me coming in and convicting you of this and it's keeping my holy spirit from uh working in your life you need to tear down that wall and let my conviction work and you and let go of these things and you'll see my power and my might my deliverance for sin you cannot overcome that lust ladies you can't overcome these things because i've told you to get rid of the accursed thing and you cannot stand before your enemies of sin until you remove the accursed thing from your life. So remove it. If you want to see my face. Otherwise there, there is no heaven. For those who are holding on to the world. And guys. Um, I prophesy in the Lord these things. Because I don't. Not to condemn you. But because I don't want to see you in hell. I love you guys so much. 
and I got to be careful also. I got to I gotta walk a high path of holiness. I got to be careful because there's no room in Jesus' kingdom for bitterness. There's no room for unforgiveness. There's no room. Then there's things that toss at me during the, during the day that try to get me to do, to get angry. Say, like I said, I was grieving the other night and I was partially a little bit angry with my cousin because I was so grieved and I was like, why would, you know, it puts me through torture to see if a loved one knowing that they're not headed toward the gate of heaven because me as a prophet of the Lord, I sought the Lord and he, he answers me face to face directly about a lot of these stuff stuff and he, that's one of the things he answered me to that no women is getting to heaven in that condition and it's disturbed me but I had to forgive that person and I had to let it go and not be angry and I had to let go of the bitterness and I had to say you know what if if she wants to go her own way she can go her own way it it breaks my heart but I can't carry all that torment inside I gotta let it go I gotta I gotta Focus my attention on the Lord. And as I said to you guys, brokenheartedness leads to sin. So I'm not in it right now. I took off that brokenhearted mentality because Satan's tactic was trying to get me discouraged and back in my sin. But anyways, I pray these, this stuff uh, blesses you guys. I want you to, to just seriously, seriously consider and ask Jesus if there's anything in your life that's holding you back from the gate of heaven and ladies if you still don't believe this is sin pray to the Holy Spirit ask him to reveal it to you ask him to give you a dream I think there are many of you that are too afraid to do that because you're too afraid of what Jesus will show you but you need to be ready to pray that prayer and do that if you want to get into heaven you don't want to be getting into heaven under assumption because it's it's a terrifying thing to fall in the hands of the living God and there's, there's no, like, uh, people say, you know, like, a annihilationism and all that stuff. Uh, there's no getting out of the judgment of the Lord. It's not like Jehovah's Witnesses where they say it's not a fiery hell. It's just separation from God. It's not like annihilation teaches, which is you'll just be extinguished. Uh, at a certain point, much like death, you know, a painful death and you cease to exist. There's no hell. You guys don't even have any idea what it's like. I mean, I, I saw it. I experienced it before times in my past when I, I struggled with sin. Jesus actually cast me down there to let me experience some of the torment so I would get out of my sin. And I was felt myself burning on like hot plate and bad. I could see rivers and blood and 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 people screaming and all kinds of stuff so i i know what i'm talking about guys so i, I pray you pray to the holy spirit S seriously consider these things and seek the lord because you we never know when the trumpet's going to blow we never know when our time's going to be this isn't a uh a, a very light message but i pray that you'll take it to heart and you'll know it comes from love and so if this blesses you guys, you know, sh just share it with somebody. All right, guys. Until next time. Shalom.